Was that the after party of uh, the event where uh, you had brought in drag queens? <laughs> it wasn't that one. Yeah. Thanks for uh, rubbing that in and making me feel bad for not getting the ticket earlier. Next time I'll make sure that I'll get the ticket. But this is awesome. This is exactly what I was talking about. You know, DJ and all these uh, activities and LinkedIn uh, local Baltimore. I want to talk about this. You know, as you mentioned, the history of uh, how this whole movement started worldwide. And I've been to some other LinkedIn events in other states also. Uh, so they're nothing like how you do it. Okay, let me first say that. <laughs> Secondly, with how you have, you started these events and now they have like become a thing of their own. Uh, I wanted to understand a little bit of your philosophy in, in, in organizing these events and how they are, because they're a lot of fun. You know, I've never felt that it's a networking event. You know, it, it, it's, it, you know, as I said before, as you said, it, it's just like an awesome, awesome party. How, how, how did you come up with this idea that, you know what, let's do this and, and see what happens. So if you ask my husband, he would say that I'm a genius because I throw a party for myself every month. <laughs> and I have a bunch of companies who are just willing to come and participate. And I've really, I, I've figured out the formula there. Um, but on, on the more serious side, I've done a lot of networking. So um, prior to my career as a consultant at Booz Allen, um, a large part of what I did was sales driven, right? So I had to attend a lot of networking events. And when I came or when I moved to Baltimore in 2012, um, that's how I got to know people. That's how I sort of met my professional posse. And I learned a lot about networking events and what they looked like at that time. And with something like LinkedIn Local, who is uh, the whole premise behind it, is to meet the person behind the profile, to get out of the digital world, and for me to actually get to know Sumer, not get to know what you do every day, nine to five, or how you're going to benefit me in my nine to five. So me being able to share my own philosophy of being able to have fun, because when I went to a networking event, I never changed who I was. And I was silly or I was somewhat maybe vulgar or maybe, you know, I would enjoy a cocktail while I was there. I didn't just come in a suit and exchange a business card and think that, you know, things were going to happen for me that way. So really creating an environment where people feel comfortable, I think is key to having successful networking events. Now, not every networking event needs to have drag queens and DJs. <laughs> some of them do though. And you know what, that's going to make for an interesting experience for someone who hasn't been there before. And maybe they will want to come back and maybe they won't. But the coolest thing about the formula that I, I think that I have been able to create with my volunteers is that it's always different. We have never duplicated an event. We've never duplicated a venue and we use several different local vendors who want to participate. And that's what really gives it the, that extra flair, um, you know? So why can't you have fun and network at the same time and be yourself? And you should be able to party and get business done, you know? Just like they say, a lot of business gets done on the golf course, a lot of business gets done in a bar too. Party and get business done, I love that. And, and, and I can vouch for that uh, because uh, with the events that you hold, uh, they're always different, but they're, and they're always fun. So on the on the dot. <laughs>